Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Planet Zoo. We're back in Arcadia and this time we're starting our mountain biome. And we're going to start strong with a double grizzly bear habitat. So you can see here we've got some pathways put in. We've also got some new water features put in. But basically what we're going to be doing is just on our entrance to our new area here, you're going to see new staff facilities. The path goes all the way up and joins up with the rest of our mountain biome. Our first grizzly bear habitat is going to be in this section here with a nice little cave for them to escape to and sleep in. And then our second one is going to be on the cliff above them. So we're going to be able to kind of swap between our male and female companions without there being too much overcrowding and things like that so these two habitats are going to be built today you're probably going to see me mixing between the two of them and then we'll do some little tours between the two and uh, yeah that'll be it so two new habitats technically just the same species so let's uh, dive into our speed build when it gets to a nicer time of day so this all begins with some fences. Now there's not going to be a great deal of fence work in this build. I just wanted to do some that I would use across both of these exhibits and uh, we'll just make them nice and simple because what I'm wanting to do is create enough of a barrier with rock work that it looks like more of an open habitat and our grizzlies are going to be unable to traverse the rocks that we've put in place. So uh, this basic barrier is just using wooden beams and some of the twilight portcullis metal banding just to get it all nice and detailed but not go too overboard. We're then going to put in some sort of overlapping structure on the top to prevent anyone climbing in or out. And uh, it's really simple and just a, a quick way to get a little bit of a custom barrier put in place. And this is just going to sit uh, around the corner of the pathway that goes up into our new mountain district. Now, you're also going to see a few other things developing in the background uh, that we're going to cover in a stream and then a later episode episode where we're basically just going to touch up the in-between bits where our wetlands biome meets our new mountain biome and that that'll just get everything nice and synergized and basically fill in the little blank pieces in between our new habitats and our new zones within the zoo so it's a really exciting time at the moment traversing between some new biomes and things and uh, i'm really happy with how things are turning out in this zoo it also means that we're coming to an end of uh that like kind of i don't know i guess the mid-season break for um arcadia and we may even start playing around with a brand new zoo in the future so i just wanted to put in some of these twilight door handles to create some little ringlets on the top of this structure just so that it kind of finishes it all off and gives a little bit more of a barrier at the top it's not amazing but it's simple enough and i was quite happy with how it turned out you can see our bears are in situ now and we're just merging some of these fences with our landscape so once these are put in we'll start working on some rock work and uh, i first did a little bit of a swatch at the uh, first like exit where our staff are going to be able to enter this habitat and then made a little bit of a, a lean to that would be the exit so our staff actually have a big staff area underneath the um, hillside here so it cuts in very much like we did in the northlands build uh, a lot of the staff facilities are hidden in the landscape there so we don't have actual buildings they're just built into the side of a mountain and it all looks really cool and uh, yeah it just gives a little bit more of an aesthetic touch to the build this uh, exit kind of gets backed into the mountainside so once we get the basic structure work done here and the door frames it'll be sunk in and then we'll start working on a little bit more of the rock development and finishing off the mountainside at the moment it's looking a bit garish but i just wanted to put in some basic rock structures so that i had a bit of an idea for how i would frame this entire piece here and again we're using some of the twilight stuff and then sinking that door frame into position we do have to adjust the barriers a little bit here because what i want to do is have this stick out a little bit more and uh, have the rocks kind of falling down into the exit so that our staff look like they have to like just come out of this mountainside into it and because our walkway on the top there is interfering a little bit the rocks actually stick out more than the doorway so 
we needed to make a few adjustments to the barriers here to make sure that everything was fitting together nicely and we could follow through with what we're trying to do with the mountainside. Moving on, we just wanted to do some touch-ups here, get some basic rock structures surrounding this area, and then we're going to fill in the pool. So the idea here is that the pool structure is just a, a rocky outcrop that's been filled with water, so we're not doing anything artificial here. It's all got to look quite natural, and uh, we're going to put in the fish feeder under the water there so that the bears have some diving to do to get their meals, and then we'll uh, finish off this pond area. So once all of these rocks had been put into position, it was a uh, a pretty good looking area and I did need to make some sort of structure to get our bears into the pond and uh, I did use a little bit of a variation on some of the stock blueprints that you can unlock when you do your research with your mechanics so really simple I just wanted to keep it uh, nice and basic nothing too extravagant for this build as we move into our new mountain biome and I did play around with a few of the blueprints you're gonna see me flicking through here what uh, is available uh, I wanted to use um, some really basic wooden structures, so this is why I chose the blueprints. Some of them weren't really what I was looking for, like this one here, so I ended up using something that was a little bit more compact, like this piece here. And obviously when we sink it in, it needs to have a little bit of an extension on the ramp. So that was just a case of duplicating the actual wooden ramp after we'd put in a few more rocks just to add some structure to the place and then extend the ramp down to the ground level. And then our bears have this lovely area that they can traverse up and get to their watering hole. And it doesn't impact the overall terrain that they have access to too much. Obviously, um, the bears, you can only have two in a habitat to adults, a male and a female, which is why I've decided to make two habitats for the grizzlies in total. That's just going to allow us to have a cross-breeding facility going in our habitats. Then we're going to start making our cave here. And this is where we start putting in the synergy and the traversal of our two different types of rock. So we have that tropical rock that's starting to merge in with our tiger rock. And then we can start making our cave. And once again, very much like I've done for the rest of this build, we put in a load of larger rocks that we're going to move around to create the cave. And then we will put in a few smaller rocks to add some more detail to it. At the moment, this is completely covered up, but we may actually put in a few um, holes in that top of it so we get some natural light pouring into the cave. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to do that yet, but if we uh, come to it at the tour, you will see it then. Uh, I think maybe we'll leave this one and have the next cave that's uh, available have a few holes in the top because both of these habitats are going to be quite similar layouts just in different locations. So we're going to have some nice lush foliage surrounding the outskirts of the habitat, a bit of open space in the middle, and then the caves. Now the cave on the upper portion of the habitat is actually going to have a viewing area so that the guests can come and see the bears while they're hibernating and uh, this cave is going to be very much more of an enclosed space but we've got that nice traversal between the tropical rocks and the tiger slash tundra rocks so it's just to create a nice bit of contrast and uh, make it a bit more of a smooth transition between our zones because these all back up into each other so we do have some issues there where if we have any if it's too much of an obvious change, I think it can be quite um, a bit of a shock to the system, I guess, if for want of a better word. Uh, you just need to be able to have a nice uh, kind of merge in between these areas. And that's something that I always do in all of my builds. You've probably heard me talk about that before. Uh, I just like to reinforce the habits that I have developed as a builder in Planet Zoo so that you get a better understanding of how things work. Now, this part of the build was actually done on stream and I have kind of developed a few more things and, and what people would like to see on the channel, which has been really interesting. It's another reason why I would advise anyone if you've got the time to come along to the streams because I'm always open to your suggestion and it brought me back to talking about foliage decoration which we're doing here so a lot of people do have issues with uh, how to build foliage correctly so maybe we could workshop that in a few streams or put it together and make a full episode on it now there's a bit of cook content from this where we talk about 
um, plotting and planning um, the foliage itself and how we use layers, how I use layers in my builds. And uh, that's something that I'm going to bring to life a little bit more. So maybe we'll do some more mini-sodes where we revisit some things. And I had actually planned a long, long time ago that we've not done for a while to do some small um, foliage brushes that you can just put into your habitats and then copy paste and remove certain aspects of it to save a bit of time when you just want to plop down a build. So I've got a lot of people who have subscribed and watched the streams quite regularly who have said that they just like things to be done. Uh, and the actual decoration part is uh, very time consuming and very boring for them. So uh, as someone who loves to create and build and mess around with foliage, I think it's only fair that I can create something that is then accessible for people who just want to manage a zoo or put those habitats in place and then go away and, and watch things come to life. So that's something that I will definitely be looking to do in response to your feedback as a viewer because I value that and it helps develop the channel, it helps develop my skill set and it helps me get a better understanding of what the people who are here want. So foliage here as you can see we're using a lot of the mosses that can just sink in real nice to the rockwork below and that gives us our basic structure then we come in with a mixture of dry grasses and uh, wet grass and then add some cowberry and uh, bearberry bushes in just to give a little bit more texture to it we then add in our trees which give some height to the habitat knowing what we've got here we're going to have a lot of really tall trees coming here which i think makes that mountain area look really quite imposing but also very attractive it's something that you want to go and see it also um, leads the eye as someone who's just kind of viewing a, a look at this habitat it, it makes you want to look at that place these large trees in the distance and you want to head towards it and see what's going on there it also means that you're not going to really see our bears from a distance you have to come up close and view the habitat itself which is where you'll be treated to our big grizzlies chilling out in their habitat which I think is a really cool concept now you're also going to see in the background here that there's some blank spaces and that's something that i plan to fill in very soon i've got a lot of ideas for the extra habitats that are going to surround this area and how we're going to make it all fit in and work and i'm really excited to start on a new location after such a long time making the tropical habitats to be making something that's got a little bit more of a biome change and a certainly a continent change it's going to be really nice to finally come around and close off this area so once we have actually finish the mountain bio we then got our tropical wetlands area and then old town itself and we're actually finally gonna create a space that is complete you'll notice in the other videos there's been a lot of um, little bits that haven't been filled in and um, finally we're getting around to doing that now as we move into this brand new biome so we're actually gonna have a completed part of this zoo ready to move into the lower wetlands biome which i think is really cool and i'm really really excited to get that one done so we'd uh, finished off the foliage and then it was time to tidy up this cave a little bit and create some more little rocky outcrops to fill in those larger spaces where we have some of the slightly oversized rocks that make it all look a little bit weird and this is a very long process it takes a lot of time to put these rocks in and for that reason you're, you're seeing this habitat being built as kind of like a bit more of a live speed build the second habitat we're going to conclude we're going to include it in the tour but we're not actually going to be showing you the full build of it what i'm going to do is i'm going to have that all pop into place and then we'll, we'll show that at the end of the episode as that's built and then you will get the nice tour of both habitats. Uh, I did say at the beginning of the episode you were going to see me switch between the two of them, but I thought this was a really nice way to do it. So you get a full build of this single habitat here, and then mainly the measures that I've used here are used to create the secondary habitat. So it's all going to look really cool. I'm really excited to show this one off because uh, I've not built bears yet so a lot of my uh, time in planet zoo has been for content creation i've not actually done much uh, zoo building that has not been part of a series on youtube so all of the animals that i'm building are pretty new uh, like i've never done the grizzly habitat i've done like lions and stuff i've never done any sort of bears this is my first bear habitat and uh, you're gonna hear me saying this a lot uh, because that's just how my experience with planet zoo has been a lot of my growth as a build 
builder and my development has been because of creating stuff for YouTube. So it's really exciting when I get to build with a new animal like the Grizzlies and discover their mechanics and see how they work, which is really nice. So we'd put this feeder in and it turns out that it was inaccessible because of all of the rocks that we've got in there. So we had to just make a little bit more space and make that feeder accessible again. And then our bears have this wonderful little pond. We filled in the terrain there, made it all rocky. Obviously we can put in a few underwater plants and things like that and that'll, that'll eventually get done. But uh, back to this. So our rocks are looking really bare and it's now time to fill this in with foliage. So we are using a nice mix because the bears can have three different biomes. Uh, as long as they're North American foliage, we can have tiger, temperate and tundra biome foliage here, which means we can really go wild on what we've got so I'm starting with my bramble bushes we'll be using arrowwood a little bit later on and then we'll be using the white sage bush that we've already used previously in this build all of them combined together make this really really good looking habitat and I think it's it's so nice to be able to just sink a few of these brambles in to give a little bit of a, a texture and a colour differential in the rock work itself. Then you flesh it out with the arrow wood, which has such a unique texture, very much like the scaviola bushes. You can really use them to create some nice coverage in a build. And then you can have some flowers poking out the top of that arrow wood. And also with arrow wood, it has a really nice curvature to it. So you can have it adjusted around your rocks. You can have bits sticking out the top of a rock and then have it spilling over the edge of a rock and uh, falling down into another part of your habitat. Then we come in with the uh, Phacelia flowers just to add a nice pop of purple there. It's a really vibrant flower and it looks really cool. And then a few more different plants as well. Bracken also playing a big part because it's taller than some of the other grasses we've used so far. And it has that lovely greenery that's a little bit more vibrant than the uh, slightly duller greens from the bramble and the arrowwood bushes. Holly trees would be a great addition here as well. So we're putting some of those in. The one on the top looked a little bit too out of place so that was removed and then of course manzanita brushes which are really really cool they've got a multitude of different textures and stuff and uh, the, the way that they kind of sprawl out makes them a really really nice addition to any habitat and then we came back in with a little bit more arrowwood because we needed to make this look a little bit more seamless. Uh, the uh, stark transition between the rock and the roof here is uh, a little bit difficult to work with. So we can only just about fit some arrowwood bushes in just kind of sticking out a little bit. We could also put in a little bit of bramble work here as well, but I thought this just needed something a little bit simple. Two over the top would be a little bit much of a stretch, uh, but there are a couple of nice leaf pieces that we can actually fit in here as well, just to make it look a lot better. Uh, I tried using some of those bristlecone pines, but they didn't really work. So Virginia creepers came in here just to add a little bit more of a pop of colour in there and uh, take away the attention from the rock work, which is quite, uh, I think it's just a little bit too in your face and a bit stark. So that needed to be covered up a little bit and it was quite difficult working with such a steep drop down. We could have made it a little bit more of a gradual uh, decline going down into that habitat, but it didn't really work and it would be cutting into the space in the habitat a little bit too much. Then more arrowwood bushes again, just to cover up this uh, rock face here. And uh, again, coming in with our white sage bush, you can see a lot of continuity in here with the rocks and the uh, actual bushwork that we're putting in. And that just keeps along with the theme of the entire habitat. We didn't want to kind of put in bushes and stuff just randomly. That didn't seem to fit in with the rest of it. So I always picked like three key bushes or like two or three just so that I know that what I'm working with is set within this habitat and we can always change it at the next one but I prefer to have just like two or three go-to's in one habitat and then we can expand and do something a bit different in another one. I use some of these nice planet zoo logs just to add a little bit more of a dimension to it as well. I keep forgetting to use some of the basic clutter and stuff like the little trees and the, the fallen tree branches and stuff so the broken white birches came in here as well as some of the stumps uh, just to add a little bit more variation with what we've got going on here. It's something that I always forget about really. I just do rocks and uh, foliage work and then realize that there's other props and things we can actually make use of in these habitats. But 
all said and done it's looking really nice threw down a couple of diamond leaf willows as well just to push the uh, textures and and different uh, types of bushes in there again a little bit more and some girdle rose bushes and hydrangea plants as well and then more lady fern just to kind of keep that forest theme going having these things poking through the rock work is always a really nice touch i left the cave a little bit more bare uh, i didn't really want ha, bear i said bear it's a bear habitat that was not an intentional joke and now i've just uh, totally thrown it all off but we are coming to the end of this build anyway there is one thing left to do which is to see the second habitat pop into place so as we're finishing through i'm just going to quickly shoot through what happens in this habitat when we finally get to it there was just a couple more bits of bushwork to do around the dive pool for our bears here so a couple of water lilies and then more arrow woods again nothing too extensive so we are now at our new habitat this is the staff entrance and exit going in there we are nice and easy and then we fleshed this cave this side out with more rocks and bushes and trees which looks really cool over in our guest viewing area this is the cave going in and then we go into the habitat to do the back bit and this is where the rocks kind of flow down where our guests are going to be able to access this new level all of that going in and then this side trail nice and forested up there giving guests little viewpoints through the trees then the interior went in and finally our enrichment items and we'll just go to an overhead view now and see everything popping into place so you get a bit of an idea of where this sits in with the rest of the zoo and that's about it so i hope you enjoyed this one and enjoy the tour that follows drop me a like if you enjoyed this video comment on what you want to see next i'm open to ideas for our new mountain biome and i'd love to hear what your thoughts are i'll see you next time bye bye